As put together by producer Sean Pamphlon, here is a unique look at Rocker's comments, a piece we have titled America's Open Mic on John Rocker. We shouldn't have been surprised by this. You know, let's not forget his, his great leisure time passion is professional wrestling. What happens in professional wrestling when you scream the most hateful, bigoted, misogynistic, homophobic things? Become a bigger and bigger star. Nowhere else in the country do people spit at you, throw bottles at you, say, hey, I was with your mother last night. I talked about what degenerates they are, and they proved me right. Just by saying something, I can make them mad enough to go home and slap their moms. That whole issue about this being a New York thing is nonsense. That's a dodge. I think that the first day after that article appeared, I must have read maybe 15 or 20 columns. Um, people say, you know, get him out of here, uh, on and on. And the progression went from there to the free speech argument. Commissioner Bud Selig has suspended Braves reliever John Rocker until May 1st and has touched off a baseball showdown between freedom of speech and freedom from morons. The issue is not John Rocker, the issue is Rockerism. It's too bad that, that people have twisted uh, the First Amendment that way. Calling a teammate a fat monkey, that would bother anybody. Every time you see a black person, you're going to have to explain. Our First Amendment rights are supposed to save us from the very thing that Rocker did. Every time you see a, a Spanish person, you're going to have to explain why he hate. Not only was Hank Aaron very outspoken, there were members of the Braves teams that were very outspoken. But once the boss spoke, it's changed everything. Hank Aaron, he's absolutely reviled and repulsed and revulsed by what, what John Rocker said. And yet he's, he's on the board of directors of the Braves. Why, why didn't he do anything to, to, to get rid of the tomahawk chop? Why didn't he do anything to, to censure his boss, Ted Turner, who said more racist and bigoted things on a continuum than anyone in this mix? We've given second chances to, before to a lot of people, and this shouldn't be any different. I believe that one of the reasons that Jesus was accused of being a homosexual is because he spent time with homosexuals. Reggie White's comments were very similar. Uh, he couched them a little better. If you go to Japan or any Asian country, they can turn a television into a watch. They're the same in terms of just this base, you know, banal, you know, idiocy, but they're different in terms of some of the underlying things about what they're getting at. I will emphasize that I am not a racist, although I can understand how someone who does not know me may think so. Let's face it, I mean, the only thing clear about his apology is that someone wrote it for him. What did you think when he said my home in Macon was a place where players from different ethnic groups and countries live for as long as six months and as short as two weeks? I wanted to puke. I think he certainly has had to pay uh, a high price for this because of the public outcry. Uh, on the other hand, it is something that he brought on himself. John is probably at his humblest right now. He almost could see where he wanted to tear up a little bit. So then the martyrdom came in there with Rocker. And now, I think I read about 25 columns of, I'm tired of talking about it. Let's get it over with. If it's really such an outrage, if it's the outrage you thought it was to begin with, you can't stop talking about it. I don't doubt for a second that John Rocker was, was doing a, uh, a professional wrestling imitation when he was saying these things. The biggest thing I don't like about New York are the foreigners. I'm not a big fan of foreigners. You can walk an entire block in Times Square and not hear anyone speaking English. How the hell did they get into this country? Asians and Koreans and Vietnamese and Indians and Russians and Spanish people. I'm not a racist or prejudiced person. But certain people bother me. Beware of the Mormon. Beware of the Roman Catholic. Beware of the Jew. Beware of the Muslim. Imagine having to take the number seven train to the ballpark, sitting next to some dude who just got out of jail for the fourth time. I'm not a racist. I got black friends. Next to some kid with purple hair. Next to some 20 year old mom with four kids. Next to some queer with AIDS. But you can't call me a racist. My closest friend is a first-generation Lebanese with his grandfather coming through Ellis Island no more than 60 years ago. Some people think what you don't know can hurt you. Wrong. The Lord God said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. It's, it's still there. It's, it's lingering. It's not going anywhere. He sort of elevated white maledom as being the measure. Uh, just, just a little bit of growing up will have to be done.
If John Rocker were a right-handed pitcher through 85 miles an hour, where would he be right now? He'd be in aisle six bagging groceries. I don't want to blame John Rocker on society, but I blame society for John Rocker. People were looking for, for any excuse to scream. I mean, it's the, it's the politics of race as opposed to, the, to the, um, the, the genuine treatment of racism. Whether it's a caller at a talk radio station. When a personality like John Rocker spews hate for no apparent reason, then he needs psychological testing whether it's the host of the talk show. Fans want to win, and I think when games start and there's a lot happening with the team, I think you kind of forget about what Rocker may have said December on a cold day driving through Macon, Georgia to Sports Illustrated. I believe in the scarlet letter and all of that, but more needs to happen to John Rocker. They want to feel like they've had their impact on this 400-pound gorilla, which has sat on the city and leaned on the country. Everybody wants to be heard. Following that apology, he was very eager to tell people that so many people came up to him and said that you have my support. Well received everywhere I go, and yet every night I turn the TV on and see you know, how horrible a person everybody says I am. I firmly believe that the, he was part of the double standard that essentially states that a minority player, a minority entertainer, can uh, say virtually anything he or she wants and not have to suffer the commercial consequences. For example, like when Charles Barkley said, I hate white people. You're going to get a chance if you're a minority to say those things. You almost get a pass, while if you're white, you may not get as, uh, as big a pass. And that's the way it should be, because when your majority talks about a minority, you obviously got a problem, and what Rocker said was crazy. Where I think the white male today is a, is a great personal and professional risk for being equally as bigoted as a, as a minority. The difference between John Rocker and Charles Barkley is that Barkley doesn't spare the rod for his own people. But then, and now, if a white athlete had said, I hate black people, what would the response be? Oh, I, think, no, I think we know what the response would be. John, do you really, really feel that we are out to do a number on you? Yes. Next question. Why should a minority get a pass based purely on skin color? And they shouldn't. They shouldn't. You're 100% right. Minorities should not get a pass on that. But in this society, he does. I think a lot of the reaction is just defense mechanisms for the way people really feel. It's easy to just point, these, these guys are the bad guys. Rocker's a bad guy. Reggie White's a bad guy. But it has nothing to do with, you know, the current, you know, cultural zeitgeist of what's going on here. I find myself getting involved in these, these discussions with people right after John Rocker. It was all, it usually went like this. Well, John Rocker said this, well, how about, what about OJ? That's the real sad part about the Rocker debate. People had their minds made up on this issue. But that's what I'm saying, John Rocker was raised in the South. John Rocker come from Macon, Georgia. You can't have it both ways, stereotyping him as a hillbilly or a redneck, just because he comes from Macon. This is Macon, Georgia, where that view that John Rocker espoused in that Sports Illustrated uh, is the prevalent view and has been in the South for decades. What I want to point out is something perfectly obvious to the visitor or tourist, but less so to the native. No matter how much we tell our changing, politically correct social structure, the sad truth is that Major League bigotry, bigotry lies pervasively just beneath the surface of the Deep South. Georgia is no exception. I've been trying to find out where does a person like John Rocker pick up that kind of hatred. His parents have already said publicly, we didn't raise him to think like that. I did not agree with, with what John said, but I think John, John just had a bad day and said some very unkind and insensitive things. Rocker's stupidly blunt pronouncements are but one sign of an attitude born in slavery, fueled during Reconstruction, and promoted by generations who blindly assume that society is made up of us. 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 Us and them. 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 It is dying, of course, but not fast enough. Not fast enough. It's a southern thing. And there's a certain amount of that kind of bombast that's in Reverend McDonald's rhetoric. To readily accept John Rocker will send a message to our children that will reverberate for some time to come. That's also in John Rocker's as well. Maybe the town's not big enough for the both of them. I think it's time people began to realize that no minority group 
A no majority group has an exclusive on pain and should have an exclusive on punishment. The union says it is literally unprecedented to impose a penalty on a player for pure speech. I don't think, and members of our clubs don't think the Rock has paid any price. An apology is no more than just words unless it's followed by actions. It, it is time to really demand that, uh, that these individuals not just be good ball players, but they at least be uh, somewhat decent human beings. We're from Atlanta, and the people that were complaining and raising cane in Atlanta have never bought a ticket for the Braves game in their life and have nothing to do with spending any money that brings the city money. They just wanted 15 minutes of fame. Isn't it actually better for your cause if he doesn't show contrition, if it, if, if it perpetuates? I uh, no. But please understand that I will have no further comment on this matter. What would you like me to say? Turn, get, get this guy out of here. Most people are sick of it. Cash something. I'm sick of it. Did our cameraman stop harassing him? You're sick of it. Turn the camera off, dude. You don't want to cover this every day. Unfortunately, that's what the world is today. John, at what point then do you think that this whole thing will end? It'll end when the media decides it's going to end. John Rocker, as you know, has vowed to take the number seven subway to Shea Stadium when the Braves reach New York next weekend. But what if one of those queers with AIDS who you wrapped in Sports Illustrated wants to talk to you? New York's police commissioner says that, quote, it will be like protecting the Ku Klux Klan. I mean, I, I've, I've been, I've been running into nothing but positives ever since all this, you know, all this stuff has happened. We love John Rocker. Love you, John. Love you, Rocker. So, uh, what, what lesson is there for him to learn? Thank you. Thank you very much. Rocker! the man, Rocker. That's why I said these arguments really don't belong in sports because it exposes everyone um, uh, for their superficial understanding of race and, 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 uh, and oppression. One factual point.